into the table with Miss Jamie. Introduce yourself and say what character in fairy tale you play. Hi, I'm Jamie Markey, and I'm the voice of Kana. Hi, I'm Brittany Karbowski, and I'm the voice of Wendy. Yes, she is. Sting, 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 sting. I am Michael Jones, and I'm the voice of Sting. I'm Jason Douglas, and I'm the voice of Gildart. And I am Rob McCollum, and I am the voice of Jalal, and also Z-Grain, and also Mystigan. I get ellipses between my characters. I just get drunk. <laughs> so. so is there anybody on this panel who has never done a fairy tale panel before? <laughs> well, the two of us in the middle. Okay. Okay. Oh, three of us. Awesome. Wow. I've not done a fairy tale specific panel before. Then, right. then we'll make sure to let you guys answer first. Oh, no, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to lean on you guys for plot details that we may have missed. Great. Are there waters around? Can I see uh, I might water? have another water. Mm. Yeah, there's some waters. Yay! There are waters, we have all the things. We get thirsty when we talk. It's true. I'm just thirsty. So Hydrate. This? This That's is, our lesson for the day. Hydrate. This is going to be a Q&A panel, correct? We like those. Yeah. Yes, yes Q&A. We already have a lot yeah. of A lot of line. Right. A line. Look at you in the you front. You guys do again. Q. We do Ready? A. Yeah. All right. Well, Hopefully. get your ass to this microphone. Let's do number one. That's the A. Oh, sorry. That's the A. I'm Kana. <laughs> <laughs> She said Q&A, not t and <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> All right, it may just, not come up. Yeah. You can just pick it up. Just reach it, pick just, pull just, it out. There, there you go. go. You can do that, there too. You Way to there manhandle that mic. Turn it on. Turn, Turn it, it on, on for everyone. Check it. It's not a, oh. it's hey, there we go. Hello? Okay. There you, you got are. It. This ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> um, hi. Wait, there's a rodeo? <laughs> no, man. It's out back. It's, it's the craziest thing. I've ever I love seen. Sacramento. That's what we were cheering about. Oh, wait, you were there for that. Um, hi. Uh, so my questions, um, you guys obviously have a pretty unique career in terms of like just general careers. Um, so I was wondering, what's something that people who don't do what you do, maybe a fans, family, whoever, that like they underestimate or they don't understand about what you do? Uh, that there's a ton of failure involved before you uh, find any success whatsoever. And that even after you've started in this business and you're starting to sort of roll a little bit, uh, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, but I'm auditioning 10 times more than I'm working, if that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's not a business where you, you, know, you go to school and you, you, you get a degree and then suddenly everybody wants to hire you. You're constantly having to prove yourself um, and... and and you're constantly getting passed over uh, for, for roles for other people. So when we get cast in something, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, a great little victory because we've auditioned maybe for 10 or 12 other things that we didn't get. Um, so it's, it's a bruising career, and it may look cool and glamorous, uh, and, and it, it maybe feels that way to us maybe 5% of the time, but, but it takes a lot of, um, a, a lot of effort, uh, some, uh, some degree of training, and uh, a, a considerable amount of perseverance. So that might be something that people don't realize. I also want to make clear to people that there are literally dozens of dollars to be made doing anime <laughs> voiceover work. <laughs> dozens upon dozens. 24. <laughs> Yeah. We are all about the Washingtons. <laughs> yeah. You guys, a, I think that is you just got a great that. answer. Great. Also, you with me. Yeah. I would say something else too is that screaming for four hours is fun, but it's very hard. Mm -hmm. And that, if, especially if you have like a long session, an eight-hour session in, in the booth, it's it's exhausting. So when you get home, it's like yes, I've had a I have a fun job. It's really fun, but. I'm tired. <laughs> it's exhausting. Um, and, you know, on camera, too, Jason, you can tell, like, that's exhaust. Just waiting is exhausting. Sure, <laughs> yeah. sure, sure. Also, just expending that amount of emotion, you know, in general, you know, even when you're not screaming, when you're yeah. crying, when you're, you know, upset, mm -hmm. and something like that in a show, it will take it out of you. Because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I try to access it from a place of somewhere that was real to me yeah. so that nope. I can make it sound right. <laughs> Well, Nothing's other methods are around. There are I'm other kidding. methods. Stanislavski. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so I don't know. I, it can be exhausting in that way, too, I would say. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you for the question. Thank you, Joey. First question of the day. Good job. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Hello. Hello. Of the 
the characters that you guys played, what about them made you least or more excited to play them? Okay. Um, you can choose I, any character. You, um, oh, right. non fairy tale uh, related, just, fairy just tale? in general. Yeah, in general. Okay. Oh. I mean, with the fairy tale, it was the drinking. <laughs> <laughs> pretty great it's pretty great yeah i think in fairy tale isn't it the case that they cast most of us according like very closely to our actual personality and habits yeah, yeah right. pretty much you know what's yeah. funny about so. that is once we were cast like we already knew we were cast but they hadn't come out with the cast list yet and i had so many fans saying you should be connie you should be connie and i was like what are you guys trying to say <laughs> i mean i am and you're right but what are you trying to say <laughs> it's rude <laughs> I think at first with Wendy, I was a little bit like, gosh, she apologizes a lot. And I wanted her to be like stronger and like more independent. But I feel like throughout the show, she hasn't been stagnant. She has become more independent. And her relationship with Carla is started out almost like a naggy mom or like an overbearing mom who was always like, Wendy, Wendy. And I'm always like, oh, Carla. Um, but kind of like now, not to give away any spoilers there, it's like a, she almost reminds me of a proud parent just stepping back and looking at her bloom, and she's now so independent and powerful and confident. Um, that's what I really liked about her, is that she wasn't the same. A lot of characters in anime are stagnant. They stay exactly the same the whole time, and she didn't. And I really liked that about her, at least with her. Uh, what I liked about Sting was that, uh, kind of right there, like he had the confidence, but he could actually back it up. You know, he was actually like a really good fighter. He, he kind of knew what he was talking about. Kind of a jerk, but... He was, he was really cool. I mean, that was my favorite part about him. I get to fight and do all this stuff. Um, and then what I didn't like is that he didn't win. <laughs> I feel like that was a mistake in the writing. Yeah, I tried fair. to argue that with the director. That happens a lot. Couldn't change the dub. You guys gotta change this. It's tough to overcome the animation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can't act your way out of that anyway. No, I was just playing a, a bitter guy with a misspent childhood who was hopelessly in love with a woman who would never love him back. So I don't know where the parallels are. I have no idea what that feels like. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, Michael, a.k.a. Sun Wukong, I prefer Olive Garden bear sticks over the cheddar stick. Good to know. <laughs> Noted. It's just like everybody's throwing bread. All right, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to come um, to the convention and spending your time with us. It means a whole lot to me, and this is towards Ro Robert. Robert, thank you so much for taking the time to come to the convention. I read that your convention appearances are very rare, so thank very you. Very few and far between. So thank you so much for choosing to come to Sack Anime. Absolutely, I'm so excited to be here. This is the this is the fifth con in six years that I have gone to. So this is the and this is the first in a really long time. So I'm excited to be here. So thank you guys for being a really good host. So. So, my question in general towards all of you is, what was the journey like from where you first started voice acting to where you are now? Uh, Interesting. Just, just one voice at a time until you get here. <laughs> uh, when I was eight years old, uh, my grandma gave me a, uh, a like Radio Shack tape recorder, and I started doing like radio dramas. I recorded these little tapes, cassette tapes, and uh, that, was, that was where I started. And then by the time I was in high school, I was doing theater. And then later on, uh, I was, in fact, I was doing theater when I started doing anime. So it, it all kind of it linked together in some weird way. But it all started off kind of like making, making tapes with my pals. Like, because that was weird like that. That was, yeah, I had the same thing. We're both really old, by the way, for the record. <laughs> But so yeah, I had the same Cassettes thing. are these things, and there's yeah. like two little wheels, and it's got like, uh, it's, it's an interesting yeah, thing. If you want to come over. cases that look like them. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Uh, we'll about. talk about it, yeah. They're actually come, making a comeback, believe it or not. Cassette tapes are making a comeback. I had the, Bands the, are starting the to put. cassette recorder, like the big flat one cassette recorder, and we would sit on the landing of the stairs, and I would make my friends read Peanuts comics, which Peanuts is Snoopy, you know what I'm saying. And I got to be Charlie Brown, and then they had to do the other things. And we would record, like, hours of this stuff. And, and then didn't I don't you know imagine made... when you were doing that that there was, in fact, an audience that would hear it at some point? Totally, like, yeah. Was this like... was going to be discovered in the archive it and then commercials sold for millions and everything. of dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah good stuff. Um, 
It's, I'm still waiting on that. That's the, the million <laughs> dollars thing. Well, and in the early days, I mean, Jamie can speak to it too. In the early days at Funimation, it was a very low-tech, tape-to-tape, mm-hmm. yeah. no digital. Nope. Um, so when you would record something, they had to stop, rewind, and you would sit there and wait for them to rewind and rewind and, wind, and then play it back and then stop and rewind and then do it again, like yeah. physical tape-to-tape. Um, but in, in the bank building... Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Kind of halfway yeah. to Fort Worth, yeah. yeah. The, the floor were with pencils. The floor below us was all the bankruptcies. Yeah. <laughs> and that they would all come in on Wednesdays for like their appointments or whatever. Yeah. And that was always an interesting day in the parking lot. Because there was drama. There was, there was always a lot drama, of drama with people there coming to the There was a lot of drama there. And there was no drama at Funimation at the time. We were just all. We're sorry like to have bored us. you. <laughs> 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 yeah. We um, thought it was My Hero Academia too. It's totally cool. It's great. <laughs> Well, uh, 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 well, it's kind of similar with the tape stuff. I used to do like home movies with my friends, like in in my backyard. We had like a cheap, you know, like Toys R Us video camera that right. plugs right into a VCR. So I'd have to like drag a TV outside to plug it in. And we would just film dumb things in the backyard. And then just because it's like the generation that I grew up, um, that kind of transitioned to doing voices on Xbox Live, just like playing playing and yelling at people over headsets and just like random voices and stuff. And then I started making YouTube videos and uh, that was a whole other thing and it spun off into another career. And then from that, actually my first big voice acting thing was Sting actually. And this is going back to like, you know, you can get a part and that doesn't really mean anything. It's great, but that doesn't mean anything. Like I auditioned for 20, 30 things since Sting. I just got really lucky on the first the first audition I had, and I've gotten parts here and there, but it's it's one voice at a time, you know. You you take what what you can get, and what you know is is the opportunity presented to you. And I I got very lucky uh, to have a good start with such like a, a strong character. Um, and then since the last like four years, I've just been doing other little parts here and there, and in, in Funimation shows and stuff like that. Uh, I did, you know because I did theater and all that of that stuff, but I never really thought of like voice acting, you know, animated character type. It never really occurred to me that that was a job at the time. But as far as like the first time I was doing voices, uh, we also, back in, in the day, we had these um, telephones that were connected to the wall. and With a cord. And with a cord. And you would True call, story. if someone called you, it would just ring. And to find out who was on the phone, you had to say hello. And then they would tell you who they were. <laughs> That's how you knew. So if someone, if you were to call someone and pretend to be someone else, they would never know who you really were because they wouldn't know what that phone number was coming from uh, until Star 69. <laughs> but uh, that, I did a lot of, the, we called them prank calling. Back when you could do it safely. And I did... I would say a fair amount of that when I was a kid. You could also yeah, do them from these crazy things called pay phones. Mm-hmm. They were these phones that just were out in the wild. Mm-hmm. And you put little round metal money in it. Yep. Uh-huh. And then no one knew. Like, you could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. You had to open up its cage first, though. Right. Yeah. Like cage. And then yeah. Get in. And sometimes they painted them blue, and like yeah. a time traveler would right. walk in and yeah. out of it, and it would yeah. disappear, and you'd be like, where's the phone? It was so much Sorry. bigger on the inside. It was. Yeah, uh, I st- I started doing musical theater I think when I professionally when I was fourteen in Houston, um, and when I was eighteen I was Janet in the Rocky Horror Show. Um, yay! Uh, a bunch of people that were working at the time at ADV Films were in it, and uh, Matt Greenfield asked me to come in afterwards. I did. The first thing that happened when I came in was he was like, "All right, we're gonna see if you can do this as a career." Scream like you're getting stabbed to death. Go! And I did, and he liked it. And uh, after that, I started getting roles at 80 Vision Films, old 80 Vision Films. And wow. I think I waited like two and a half years to get into Funimation. Uh, what was your first show at ADV, years. if you don't mind my asking? ADV was uh, Gantz. Oh, okay. Uh, and after that was Detective Loki Ragnarok. Loki Ragnarok. What was your first Funimation? My Santa. No, oh. Save Me Lollipop. One of those. Okay. Save right. Me Lollipop? Yes. The candy. I know. Um, yeah, and then yeah. it just... We know those. Yeah. We know those. Went, no one else... We know those. We went, went there from there, yeah. There we yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well. Great question. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you.
This panel's had the best questions so far of any panel I've done, which is two. <laughs> no pressure. Hi. 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 Um, so if in a one-on-one -on -one battle between Luffy from One Piece and Urza from Fairy Tale, who do you think would win? Oh, God. Ooh. Colleen yeah, just, Colleen like, is. T like <laughs> tingled all over in a... San Jose. She just tingled. <laughs> um, who would win? I feel like Luffy would win. Really? I, feel I feel like, like, like just in the sheer Earth. number of episodes versus episodes, <laughs> Luffy's got to have yeah, like Luffy's a 200,000 to one odds, right? <laughs> yeah. He's got experience. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say probably even of the two, just Colleen. Yeah, yeah Colleen would win. Would be both she of them. would win. Yeah. She is more vicious than either of the other two. Yes, yeah, true. She wins. For Be sure. afraid. <laughs> Be very afraid of Colleen. Who do you think would win? Luffy. Yeah, yeah. that's right. right. You're probably right. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Good <laughs> Thank question. You. Greetings. Oh, goodness. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 I, I think I was going to ask a question about One Piece and Fairy Tale, but I think I have to ask another one. Okay. Uh-oh. So my question is, when you do Fairy Tales, how do you manage to keep the adventure of Fairy Tale going, even though the episode, some of the other series, is up to 26 or 13? Uh, Tyler Walker, Texas <laughs> yes. Ranger. Uh, she's saying the director. That's what I'd yeah. say. Um, yeah, he, he really does so much work on the show, so much background work and everything. He's when you go in to record with him, he has so much backstory, it is so useful. It's true. And that's the benefit of being an actor instead of a director. You don't have to keep that train on the track. That's his job. <laughs> <laughs> it's very freeing, really. <laughs> but really, you go in and he'll tell you what happened in between if you miss something. And he, yeah. you know, he has it all in his head. Yeah, he knows I'll be honest you know. with you. Most of the time... Uh, when, uh, when I'm recording, I, I notice like you, you, can, you can play off of the given circumstances of the scene, even if you have no idea what That's is true. going on around you. There's usually some very simple objective that the character has. And if you just play that objective, it doesn't matter if you know any of the backstory whatsoever. It makes sense, right? So, I don't know. For me, like sometimes they'll be go the director will go on and on for like 20 minutes with backstory. And at a certain point, I'm like... Okay, but what does he want to do like right now? Let's just watch the scene. Okay, got it. Let's go with let's go with that. And there may be some things that have to be tweaked based on something the director knows that I don't know, but for the most part, it's all right there in front of you. So Yeah. You know, I think that's probably what made the stuff between Kana and Gildart so fun mm. for us because we come in and we record, you know, an hour for six episodes or something like sure. that. So, you know, and Khan is always drunk, so I don't remember what she's doing. <laughs> and, <laughs> but then we have this, this really great moment where we may not know what all has gone on up until that point specifically, but in those moments, we know exactly what we're doing, what Kana wants and the situation with her father and how complicated it is and how clueless Gildarts is until he finds out and then how that completely messes with him. It's just yeah. such a cool experience to have these characters that you know and then throw them them into a different scenario that you, that you would never expect. Just as an actor, it was so fun. That was so fun to do. Yeah. So. Anyway. Thank you. Oh, thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good work. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, so, for your characters in Fairy Tale, what would be like one of your favorite? scenes for them to like evolve into like a new person kind of so like, like a, a scene that hasn't happened but like no, something that, or no, something like a scene that has happened oh. or just our favorite scene oh what okay. was the one yeah. that you yeah. thought was the most definitive of your character maybe yeah mm. i don't mean to put words in your mouth i'm just making mm. that so you yeah that's that great. works wow. okay good. <laughs> i was watching britney try to open a piece of candy it's cough drop guys i can't <laughs> What's your favorite scene? Um, my, okay, I think it's spoilers. I can't actually say my favorite scene because it's from Dragon Cry. And today, everybody I asked was like, oh, I haven't seen it yet. But I will just say that it's like a, it's like a Saiyan moment for her. Um, that's my favorite scene. Other than that, I think that 
I enjoy the filler butt jiggle gang episodes the most. Um, like, mm, they're my favorite. So, because I want a bodysuit with padded butt and kitty ears. Yeah. That's just... You can buy one. I mean, I would do it. I need a blue wig. I'd be Wendy. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't Perfect. know. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I mean, beyond the, the guild arts thing, I w uh, really, shutting down Elfman was fun. That was a good time. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> There's two scenes for me that stand out, and one is that one, when, when, when uh, guild arts and, and Kana have their, like, wow, you, it's you, it's, you know, this whole, and, and, and the, just the range of emotions. And I remember watching that and just wondering, can it possibly get any more, like, maudlin and completely ridiculous? And then it does. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. But it's great. It's such a payoff. And, and then, but there's another scene, which is a really simple scene, and I just adore it. And it's where uh, Guild Arts is sort of just, like, throwing a ball with Natsu. And it's just this sweet little scene that they have together. And he's, uh, Guild Arts is, like, giving him advice. You know, like, you'll be all right, kid. You know, there's just this whole... And I, not only do I have, like, a 16-year-old daughter who is a big fan of you and oh. identifies with Kana in the series, so there's this whole father-daughter thing, but I also have, like, a 13-year-old son. And so, for me, those scenes were very touching because I'm a dad and I have kids that are, like, you know, they could be in an anime oh. if that were that age. That's so cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, probably one of my favorite scenes for Sting was the was the the two v two battle in the Grand Magic games because that was always something that like I wanted to do as a kid like being a big fan of like Dragon Ball Z with these huge big fights where they blow everything up they're just screaming at each other and attacks are coming out of their hands and stuff and everybody in the crowd's like they're even more powerful and I'm just like I get to do this this is so cool I was just like the coolest thing um, but as far as like a scene that there was some kind of like growth or like evolution. I really like the scene with Sting and Lecter uh, when he gets blown up. And I was like, oh man. And you see this other side of Sting that like he's not just this like hard ass jerk that doesn't care about anything. He's like, that's, that's my buddy. And he, he freaked out and punched a hole through a guy. Uh, so that was, that was actually, that was really cool to do. I hate when I do that. Yeah. I get angry and I punch a hole through someone and then you have to write the apology note. And gotta, it's a lot. It's a lot. Be careful with cats, man. <laughs> then Aaron Roberts has to fix it. Then Aaron Roberts <laughs> has to come patch it over. He's very handy. It's very handy, Aaron Roberts. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, okay, I got this, guys. Okay, so... My question for all of you is, if you all had one superpower, what would it be? To take everybody else's superpower. Ooh. All right. I like no, Wendy's I, hold on. Let me, let, let, we've been asked this like three times. Um, not to take it, to just also have it. Like, like I catch it like a virus. That's, you just, so you get to keep it, but then also I get it. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to be like, that's like Siler from No, Heroes. I don't want to, yeah. He's cutting people's brains open. Yeah, I'm not into that. I can't handle <laughs> blood, so I can't do that. <laughs> I could choose the power to handle blood, but I'm not going to do that. I want your powers, too. Didn't you say that in My Hero, too, when they asked you about that? Yes. yes. <laughs> and the, the My Hero and then the My Hero, the women of My Hero, that we asked that. And that's what I say it every time. <laughs> I like Wendy's healing power, but I'd probably spend, like, all of my time in, like, children's hospitals. I don't think I'd ever leave. I think I'd just like heal them because I love children. Moms. That's so weird. Who loves children? <laughs> Moms. It's Moms bizarre. And dads. <laughs> I would Moms take and dads it. Dads love kids. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have any imaginative ones. I mean, to me, it's always been like speed or flight, right? Those are like the coolest. Like flying's cool, right. but then you think of like if you're flying without speed, it's, you're just kind of floating there aimlessly. <laughs> it's like, oh, this sucks. I'm like a bubble. You're just like two feet above the ground. I don't really know how much that can do for you. Uh, I mean, the flash can run across water and run up buildings. So. Well, and if you go fast enough, you go fast you're enough, kind of invisible, you know. too. So it's, that's oh, a yeah, double whammy. That's, I go speed. Yeah, okay. I'll allow it, and I'll also take it. <laughs> I, she'll have that. I'll have that. I'll have what he's having. <laughs> I think invisibility would be useful for me, personally. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> but it'd be nice to slip in and out of places. Yeah. I'm a little tall. I'm like six foot, almost six foot five. 
So if I could just make, you know, like the top half of my head be invisible, then I'd have a lot of less annoyed people behind me at concerts. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it would be really awkward for them because they'd be looking at like a headless torso. Um, be fun. So I don't know if that would be cool. That, or not. You could haunt people and yet be alive. That would be amazing. Right. It'd be like a living ghost. Yes. Like why there should be like an anime about that, like people that are invisible but not by choice. Yeah. And so they're like invisible, they're like invisible ghosts, ghosts and they're trying to figure out how to be Return to that. the land of the living. Someone, or make that Someone like, write this not, down. Yeah. They might actually <laughs> they're really, be good. That's really good. And yeah. the thing is, some of them might actually be dead, and you're not like you're not sure, and you they're not sure. That's right? great. That's okay. a good idea. That's really dead good. Dead or invisible. <laughs> write it up, people. <laughs> write yeah, it down. someone make it. We make we, it happen. Have, like, I wish I had the superpower to remember when my friends come up with really funny, good ideas great that ideas. I never remember or write down. If I could just remember all of those, I would be really wealthy as a screenwriter right now. Right. So, like, part of the thing is the mystery of like, why are we becoming invisible? Like, why are the, yeah. why is this thing happening? And then it leads to like some experimental so like laboratory virus, in the like woods. You just Maybe suddenly like a, wake up. So you wake up and you're like, oh my God, I'm becoming invisible. And they're like, you don't know if they're actually dying or not. But then there's somebody that came back, right? And like, he right. was like, I used to be invisible, but nobody believes him because they didn't see him when he wasn't invisible. So they can't, you can't prove it. Yeah, so they're there and, and can hear everyone talking about it. And like, where did Jason go? He was right here. And yeah. you're like, I'm here. And we're like, I can't see him. This is yeah. good. This is but solid. then in like maybe one moment, they forget that Jason exists. So then it's like, oh my gosh, is it like back to the future? And I just disappeared off the face of the earth. Right. But then, you know, of course, that's going to be, it'll be a misunderstanding. Yeah, you check uh -huh. the newspaper and see if anybody disappeared from it. Yeah, it's good. Ooh. I'm sorry, this panel's over. We have to discuss this. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Thank nobody, you. Nobody, nobody take the idea. You can't have it. You can't yeah. be. You, I want to be a voice, please. <laughs> Just give me work. So you can, Just, you work can only now. take it if you cast us. <laughs> I loved your glasses, by the way, wherever you went. Yeah. It was invisible. Was that part of a cosplay? <laughs> a or what that? She's gone! Wow! It's coming to life. Was that, was that part of a cosplay, or is that your natural glasses? Is that, is that your actual corrective lenses? It's oh, great. Those are nice. Good choice. <laughs> Approved. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Hi. so it might be a bit repetitive because you know it's like Just a common question. Okay, so um, what's your favorite line out of all the like out of the entire series of fairy tale? Mm. Oh gosh, abandoning a friend is unthinkable. It's good. The show. Urza. <laughs> Urza. Is it? <laughs> That's mine. I can't remember specifically, uh, but when uh, she's drunk in the alley talking to Lucy, that was really fun. Uh, but my, f I guess in, in lieu of that, I'll just say, put on your shirt, Gray. Let's do that. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, I really liked again, not really specifics, but I really liked in the in the fight in the Grand Magic Games when when. It started, and Sting was impossible to beat. Uh, he was just talking down to them, like they were just a bunch of kids. Like he, he calls Natsu and Gaji a losers a couple times. That was really fun. I'm like, yeah, you're a loser. <laughs> yeah, keep up, losers. And then, and again, though, then they won. It's always fun to call. Yeah, them. yeah, it's really fun. Take, take that, Todd. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what about you? Do you have a favorite? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's not yeah, so easy. it's not that easy. Is oh, it? no. Tell us now. No, nope, there's no time. You have to answer right now. Oh. There's a whole room of people wanting to know. Well, I think one of my favorites, I, I don't remember the actual line, but I think one of my favorites is when Wendy, in the last part of the last arc of the show, she cuts her hair like to show a develop, growth development point, but I kind of like those lines along that. I thought that was really funny. Oh, yeah. Awesome. That's a very good. That was my favorite part that I couldn't, but, but yes. <laughs> Same thing, same story. <laughs> Couldn't remember. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Step right up. So I gave it away. Hi, Wendy. <laughs> um, my question is, um, if you were another, like a different fairy tale character it, um, than you are right now, like, if you were playing one character and then you were forced to, like, be another character, what would you be? Who would you be? Uh, Urza. <laughs> nice. 
I was going to say Natsu, but only because it would make Todd cry. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be Panther Lily because it's impossible. <laughs> this never would happen. Um, I'd probably just be gray because I just, I mean, I love guys with abs. <laughs> I'll never have them, so just give me all the characters they're that have there. them. They're there. They're, they're there. there. They're buried there. And they're in there somewhere. <laughs> We've all got washboard stomachs. We're just right. doing a load of towels. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well said. <laughs> I love that, Rob. That was good. I, would, uh, I, I wouldn't mind being a, a character uh, that doesn't uh, frequently uh, disappear for 40 to 60 episodes. <laughs> that, would be, that would be useful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Very good question. Hello. Hello. Um, is there a character from a show that hasn't been dubbed that you would want to play? Um, all of all of them. All of them, yes. Like any particular character? That hasn't been dubbed? Yeah. Like if it were to mm. be dubbed, like you would want to play Oh. Them? I think you might overestimate our knowledge of shows that have not been dubbed. I'm going to yeah. be real honest with you. Yeah. I, <laughs> if I was going to steal a character, I would steal Bakugo. There you go. Yeah. I feel like I give him a run for his money. But Clifford, man, he screams a lot. Like every line is him screaming. Like that must be brutal. Right. But, but that's I feel just like, Clifford, you know? Yeah. That's like him walking down the hallway. He's just <laughs> screaming. You yeah. don't know why. It's his He's directing just a screamer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really hoping that Funimation was going to get One Punch Man. Oh, yeah. And, and then we didn't. So no yeah. one got a shot at it. That's... It would have been cool if they got Sailor Moon, too. Yeah. Yeah. I would Alas. Love oh, yeah, that's a that. thing. Alas. Like any of them. Anyone. Yeah. I'd even just be a, like a dog in the background. Plus, that would be more cool cats, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. Good, right? yeah. 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 There, there are actors. I, I meet actors sometimes that are pretty aware of like what's in the pipeline in terms of That's like true. manga and, and, and what's airing over there. And they're, they're you know, their titles and, and, and they're like, well, I'd really be cool. To, and it's like, tell me, tell me more, you know, because I don't, it, it's, it's tough to actually keep up with that, um, you know, because we don't get a lot of that stuff. And so you really have to have your ear to the ground yeah. um, about what's being produced over there. So the first time I usually hear about it is, is when sure. I hear that a license has been acquired. And then you can start like figuring out like what, you know. Yeah. what's in there, but um, yeah, I don't do that research. Well, Eric Vale, who had to leave early so I can steal this story from him because he's not here to tell it for, him, for himself, but we were talking about the other day, the question a lot of times, like, how much anime do you watch and what are you, what are you fans of? And he's like, who here works in a restaurant? Who here works at, like, an Applebee's or a pizza place? Okay, so when you finally go home from that pizza place and your friends say, hey, where do you want to go eat? Do you say Pizza? No, you watch other things. You go to the Marvel Universe. So it's a, in some way when your life is, is anime for your job, the desire to go then spend some hours watching one, maybe less than the average fan. Also, we try to watch the stuff we're in. And by the yeah. time you do that, that can kind of burn your free hours yeah. just to stay up on, on the shows that you need to come to a panel and talk about. But yep. right. I feel Is there like anyone you were a fan of that you hope that we do someday? I mostly watch those. So. Awesome. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, same answer. Thank you. I like it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I can't lower this. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, hi. Uh, if you, what is your favorite celestial spirit and why? Celestial. Yeah, they don't know either. Uh, <laughs> what's I yours? Don't, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know either. So what do you mean by celestial spirit? Like, Lucy's uh, spirits. Lucy's. Um, like oh, any geez. of the oh, oh. 12 zodiac keys or the silver keys or maybe the celestial spirit king. Okay. Watch all of her spirits. I mean, it's hard because you feel as a person, you want to say your own. Like, I would want to be like Libra because I'm a Libra, right? Like, I'm a Virgo and let me explain to you why you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a Libra, so I'll listen. That's such a hard question. That's a hard question. That's a good one. We're going to think about They're that. They're also useful. Yeah. I think you stumped us. What's your favorite? Blue. Blue. Definitely blue. Okay. All right. I got to look more into it now. Thank, we failed to answer your question. I'm Congratulations. Sorry. I'm a failure. Yeah. Audience one, panel zero. <laughs> You got us there. Good job.
Thank you. Thank you. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. I was wondering if you guys had to pick one character from the show to live with, who would you pick? To live with? Oh, man. Not Carla. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I think Wendy had Carla long enough. Let me see. Man, you're really just giving it to her. Oh, yeah. She knows. <laughs> I know. No, I love her now. I mean, I lean towards Kana, but just because there's always beer. <laughs> right? That makes sense. I, 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 I feel like you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said you were done. I heard it. I got an actual... Urza. <laughs> <laughs> she probably wouldn't be awful. Maybe a little, like, demanding. Oh, it'd be a lot. <laughs> That's it. Natsu is all, like Natsu would be great for like a week, unless you, you went somewhere. Then you'd just be pulling your hair out. Yeah, right. Or he vomited. Uh, I don't know. I think Juvia. That might work. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, she's so desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just could imagine she's sitting there talking about Gray, and you're just like, uh huh. Mm hmm. Yeah. But you oh, know what? Yeah, that would be good. Sure. That would be good. Sure. A Juvia would be good because I feel like I could really, you know, help her get over her complete lack of a spine. Yeah. <laughs> it would help her. You guys know it's true. I like her hat. She does have a good hat. And I could borrow her hat. <laughs> All right. Who would you live with? Probably Frosh. Hmm, oh, that's okay. good. Yeah. Frosh is a cute one. That is a good one. That's right. a good answer. Uh, who, uh, which character does all the cooking? Anybody? Is there any food in the any show? Good, Do any we good spend cook characters? Yeah. I've any, seen uh, a few like, characters. Mira Jane, like, she like, serves it. Mira Jane. Mira Jane. Mira Jane. Oh, Mira Jane. I should say Mira Jane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mira she'd just Jane be entertaining because she's yeah. a little nut. And then you well, could like just like poke her yeah. just a little bit until she freaks out. I'm also thinking about this question from Gildart's perspective because he's basically homeless. I mean, <laughs> he's got the nicest so, house. Yeah. Can I like, can I move in with I you? Mean, he's never there though. He's he's always he's sleeping under a tree or something. And so uh, I think he's going to be grateful to get a couch anywhere he can yeah. find it. So low maintenance, yeah. low maintenance. Yeah, but food and liquor. Thank that's you. Important. Food and liquor. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. This is mainly for Jason. Has anyone ever told you that you kind of sound like Clancy Brown? I've not heard that. Thank you. Tell oh, me, yeah. tell me about uh, Clancy Brown oh, and the yeah. similarity of voices. Just like right now, like uh, yeah. your, when your voice gets deep, it kind of sounded like how, like when he just talks normally. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wait, yeah. who is Clancy Brown? Clancy Brown voiced uh, Mr. Krabs mainly. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lex, yeah. Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor. Lex Luthor. Luthor. Lex Luthor. Yep. Gotcha. From, you from, can do a Lex Luthor. Uh, 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 Highlander. Oh, okay, Kriegen got it. from got Highlander. It, got it, got it, got it. No, it's okay. totally. That's a compliment. That's interesting. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, yeah, thank really you. Yeah. Wow. 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 I, uh, I, I guess I'm aging into my voice a little bit, uh, you know. I spent my early 20s uh, trying to sound older and deeper, and now I'm just uh, uh, trying to live up to that expectation. It's gotten a little Satan-y. Why do you think that is? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. In a really good way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, what have you done? So now you're good. <laughs> um, this is a question for all of you. Uh, what made you all decide to do uh, voice acting? I was, I was cast. <laughs> and so then I was like, okay. Uh, the first thing, I actually, I was at a party, and there was a guy there that worked for Funimation, and he was like, oh, they're doing auditions. This is Dragon Ball Z stuff. And I was like, I can't do that. And then um, I went in, and I auditioned for Fruits Basket which is not at all a Dragon Ball Z type show. <laughs> and I was cast, um, and that was 16 years ago. And, th- and then they just kept casting me. Mm-hmm. So I, I hung around. <laughs> I think it was just another outlet of acting for me. At the time, I didn't really know that much about anime. Like, I knew what Dragon Ball Z was, but I didn't know it was anime. If that makes sense, I just thought it was just another cartoon. I didn't know there was like a whole genre of it. Yeah. Same with um, me. Yeah, so I didn't find out till like later. It was really just another place to go and act. And it was really neat because I could play things that I never could play before. I can't, like, I could be like a Peter Pan little boy on stage, but I can't be like Black Star on stage. So it, it, it <laughs> yeah. was a nice little outlet for that. And, and that's, it started there, and I just, I'm really passionate about acting. So I just keep auditioning and hoping for the best. I know. Yeah. I just keep casting. Um, <laughs> when, I was, when I was younger, 
maybe like eight or so. This is like mid nineties. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Did you, Walla, did you just say you were eight in the mid nineties? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm 31. <laughs> um, and you're 31. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we've got two, right. two are down. Um, uh, so like Dragon Ball Z, there wasn't a ton in the States yet, like on television and stuff. It was just kind of like the, the weekend, uh, like Saturday morning cartoons, like the early episodes of Dragon Ball Z. And it was before, it was before the Funimation dubs. Uh, that's what I remember watching. But I had a friend uh, who lived down the street who was Korean and he had all the like Dragon Ball Z movies in Japanese and like, you know, this is like before the internet and um, it was like this golden treasure trove of I've never heard of these before, I've never seen them before and we would watch those like all the time. He had like 10 of the movies and that's like where I fell in love with like anime and even though they, it was in Japanese, still like voice acting, I was just like, man, I don't understand what they're saying but this is intense. They, they're yelling a lot of stuff. And then I got, you know, into like uh, more English dubs were on TV. And then like by the time Cartoon Network came around and stuff like that. But like kind of like what Brittany said, it was just like stuff you could never do anywhere else. Like um, it's like your imagination could go so far beyond just like, uh, I don't know, something physical or like like a live action thing. It was It was just this... This super, you know, I mean, even now, like Marvel kind of does that, you know, with the with the two hundred fifty million dollar movies that exist. But you know, twenty five years ago, it was animation, or it was some really cheesy movie. Uh, so that's where I really fell in love with like the just the grandness of it, the like ridiculous and impossibleness of it. And I also just like doing a lot of dumb voices. <laughs> Um, I'll try to be brief. My story is very similar to Jamie because or, I'm sorry to Brittany's because we uh, we both started out on stage in Houston, um, and and I was doing a show called Complete Works of William Shakespeare Abridged. Abridged yes. yes. And uh, <laughs> and about that same time, I had a couple of friends who were already working for the company then known as ADV Films, and uh, really? one of them was uh, a guy named Lou Temple, who you may know from some other kinds of work. Now he's mostly working in the horror uh, genre and and did some time on The Walking Dead. Uh, but there was another actor uh, n named uh, Brian Lundy, and also known as Gil Lundy. And uh, these guys were very active with ADV in the early days. And they, mm -hmm. they were constantly kind of telling me about this little company that was doing dubbing for animation. And it, 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 it just sounded like kind of weird and interesting. And, and uh, so I showed up to the audition for this show. And the director, Matt Greenfield, had seen me in the complete works of William Shakespeare. So there was this whole kind of, um, it just kind of, everything fell into place. And they cast me as the lead in my first show there, which was a show called Kimiguri Orange Road, Summer's Beginning, which was like the second part of a three-part OVA trilogy uh, that they didn't have any of the other licenses for. They just had that movie. <laughs> Um, so one and two were not there. One and three, one and three were somewhere else, and we did number two. I have no idea, but um, it was a blast. And I did, you know, I think it was like a two-hour movie, and it, you know, they spent like 17 hours with me in the studio, and he just kind of held my hand through learning how to. I'd never worked on mic before. I'd only ever worked on stage. This was before I'd ever done a film or or on camera thing, and um, and so immediately rolled out of that and did Bubblegum Crisis, and that went to Gasaraki, and, and you know, it just, I just, I stayed busy after that. They kept hiring me, and it was like a very small company of people. They kept going kind of to a well of actors that they were kind of cultivating, and a lot of those actors are still active today. Uh, people like Monica Rial and mm -hmm. Jessica Calvello and, and the Ayers brothers, um, all those folks started out. Chris Patton. Lucy. Um, Lucy Christian, Lucy yeah. Christian. And so, um, so that was, uh, that was, I was convinced that a lot of time when, when a lot of actors were sort of leaving Texas to go to LA or New York or Chicago or elsewhere, um, that happened. And then a lot of people who probably would have left stayed because they were working and we're, yeah. we were like making living as an actor and, and it was fun and cool. And I was still doing other things that, you know, to make a living, but, uh, but this was like, wow, we can actually do this and have fun and do characters that we might never ever get a chance to actually play either on stage or, or on camera. So that's how I got started. Yeah. I'll take mine back. We got 12 questions, so I won't take too long. But mine was very similar. Early days of Funimation, 
they had Dragon Ball and then started buying up other things, but there was no real market yet. They weren't making money. Nobody knew it was a thing. So people weren't coming because they wanted to be a voice actor in anime. That didn't exist on anybody's radar here in the <laughs> States. It was, I knew Mike McFarlane from doing improv comedy, and he was pulling anybody he knew that could do voices in. And, you know, in an improv show, you might do 12, 15 different characters in the course of a night. He'd be like, hey, come in next Thursday for what? Don't worry about it. Just come. I need you. It's in Fort Worth. It's a really long drive. I'm sorry. Just show up. It's going to be fine. <laughs> and so they were so desperate and short on people that the audition was the session. Like, they were going to bring you in and record you once, and then if it was terrible, they would throw it out and then bring somebody else into audition. But if you were good enough when you walked in the room, they're like, fine, okay, we're doing this. Let's do the whole thing. And you would also go to the building, and then they would just shop you around. Yeah. Like, you would finish the thing that they called you in for, and then they're like, okay, hey, I got a rob. Does anybody need a rob? And they're like, I need two lines. Soldier B, <laughs> right. over here. And it was like an auction. And, they, and then they'd march you down the hall after that, and it's like you just had a sign that said, I will voice for food. Yeah. <laughs> and you would go from booth to booth to booth. So some things literally that ended up being big, impactful things that people get excited about when they look at my resume from 20 years ago. Yeah. I literally was cast because I was in the break room at exactly 3 o'clock that day. That's the only reason that I'm that character. It has since gotten a lot more competitive, a lot more specific with what they do for casting, and now it is an entire massive corporate empire. But back in the day, it was like two guys with a tape machine and, yeah. and a lot of roles to fill. Right. So it's changed a lot. Thank you for your question. Yeah, thank you. Also, by the way, you guys are all awesome. Thank, thank you. you. You're, You're awesome. awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> 12 minutes, 12 questions. We can do it. <laughs> Speed round. Speed round. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. So um, my question is that what was the most uh, emotional type of scene that you guys filmed in Fairy Tale? Oh, the Gildard stuff. I mean, I feel like I'm keeps answering that, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gildard's con. Face yeah. arc. And probably one of my most emotional scenes in, in most of this in work that I've done in terms of the kind of things. Oh, that, that gives me feelings. My, my cat dying. <laughs> Others? Feelings? Emotions? Yeah, I would say for going back and remembering when they kind of did the flashback episodes of what was happening to them as children and kind of reliving that with him, like... He was seeing it himself a little bit in his memory and like realizing the things that were done to them. It was kind of awful. It was kind of rough. Mine was Dragon Cry Face Arc for sure. Um, I don't want to go any further into that, but that was when I was like, okay, I do love you, Carla. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Next question. 11 minutes, 11 questions. Come up two at a time so that when the per next person leaves, you can jump in. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't feel it's like okay. you have to, to take the stroll. I mean, you don't have to, but it's just... An idea. Go ahead. Hi, yeah. my name is Alexis. Hi, Alexis. And um, I made my cosplay. Excellent. You look adorable. Very nice, you guys. Bravo. Thanks. Good. And I was. My question is for all of you guys. And I was just wondering, what would what would your characters' reactions be to um, Natsu and Lucy having a moment in Dragon Cry? Uh, probably, probably to uh, to to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Things would be utter indifference. I think Wendy'd just be like, I knew all along. <laughs> Gildars would be like, hey guys, I'm in the movie. <laughs> Guess what? What's going on? I have no idea. I've been slaying dragons. <laughs> so I would just be like, oh, that's, that's really nice for you. <laughs> I'm glad that worked out for you. Because love is great. Really. Great. <laughs> Urza. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Um, hi. 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 Um, before I ask my question, I just really want to say I look up to like all of you, like voice actors in general, but like especially like fairy tale voice actors. And I want to say the voice actor for Wendy's especially, because she's one of my favorites. Oh, thank you. I love her voice. so cute. Thank you. Um, fairy tale voice actors especially, because... It was one of my first animes, and I like always have a special place in my heart. <laughs> so, um, my question is for myself: uh, like, I want to be like a voice actor when I get older, like an aspiring voice actor. What advice did you guys have? Be an actor. <laughs> uh, community Seriously. theater is a really good place to get chops. Yeah, community yeah. theater, act. Yeah, acting, acting up. first, voice acting second. Mm -hmm. yep. Practice, yeah, practice training. 
Uh, I mean, even like the lowest level, I would say, like back to what Jason was saying, just get a tape recorder and start doing your own voices. Even if you don't do them anywhere, just practice, you know, just doing different voices, different bits. You could just imitate your favorite shows that you watch and just try and try and train yourself. Just something simple like that is a great place to start. Also, find a way to get to Texas, because that's where a whole lot of it gets recorded. <laughs> but when you get there, bring something that's yours. Be you. That's what they want to hear. Yeah, something that you can bring to the table. Don't be someone else or another character you admire, even though that's really cool, but they're cast, so be you. Right. Especially don't be us, or we will take you down. <laughs> she will flat out steal your superpower. I will. Uh, okay. <laughs> I will. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thank question. You. Next question. I was just wondering, um, with voice acting, how you hold the voices and how much of it has to be like deleted before you have the, like the final cut of the voice. How you find like how you find it along the way? Um, more of like when you have the voice, um, how long it takes you to be able to hold it for the correct amount of time. Do you mean like how many like lines do we take double takes on, et cetera? Yeah. yeah. Well, and if and I think if if you have like a different voice, like you have a different voice in the show. Uh, for me, it's it's how I talk, so it's not really a challenge. <laughs> but for those of us who have maybe a different voice, or there's a lot of screaming or something, does it take you a long time to get into that voice? Does it? go out on you? I started doing kind of the higher, higher pitched voice in most of my stuff at, back in old ADV days, so that one kind of came naturally. Um, but I would say it was challenging like that with Blackstar. It took me a long time to find that guy because I had never done a boy. Yeah. So sometimes, yes. Yeah. A lot of times there's this, uh, if you do a character enough, if, uh, just getting in the booth and sort of seeing the character begin to unwind, you know, the, the scene that you're about to start with, can bring that back. And sometimes the engineer will play a voice sample if it's early on in the show and you're still kind of finding your way. He'll play you what you did last time. And so that kind of helps you get there. And then, and then I find that just, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like holding your body a certain way. You just kind of feel it in your throat, like this is where the character is. And in some cases, some characters, you know, we might do a voice or a dialect that's kind of forward in the mouth or back in the throat or deep in the chest. And yeah. it's just what that character feels like, right? And so you, you know when you're feeling it or not. And so I don't think it's usually hard to find the voice. Like once you find the voice, you're usually good for the, yeah. for the thing. The, what, what, what can wreck you, though, is if you've got a lot of screaming, you're starting to taste your own blood. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then, that, then, then it's yeah, like legitimately time to shut it down and maybe come back next week. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, well put. It's like a play, almost like singing. It's like yeah. a place in your mouth. Right. And yeah. I mean, that's, and then that's why we, are, we say, like, take workshops, take classes, learn what you're doing, because that's all part of acting, is finding that voice of your character. That's all a part of it. And so when we go in, it's, to us, it's not like this huge effort for us anymore, because it's just a part of what we do and who we are at this point in our careers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. My question was, besides your own characters, who is your favorite character in all of fairy tale? Uh, Kana, uh, she's awesome. That's my answer. Who's next? Thanks. Panther Lily, I think. Panther I, Lily. Actually, I really like Gildard. That is pretty cool. I like Gildard he's, too. He's, he's, he's a nice, he's, a, you know, he's been through some stuff. Um, he's but like, I feel like I'm biased. So instead of Gildard, I'm gonna say Mary Jane because of the crazy factor. It's weird that I would like that. She is a bit cray cray. Mistigan. Wait, is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Howdy, howdy. Hi. So um, when Funimation first introduced simul dubbing, I noticed that on uh, the app that Fairytale dub was only halfway through the show at that point. And a few weeks later, I found the rest of the show dubbed on. So my question is, did you dub it really quickly, or um, and how did it feel uh, to dub so many episodes so quickly? I don't think it was as much us recording it quickly as them editing it and getting it mixed quickly. Because I don't, do you guys, I didn't feel like we ever went super crazy fast recording. Because no, it used to be, and the simul dub was the transition from, from the model they used to do it. They used to do the entire series at the same time, record it all, then send it to mixing, and then you, you would, it'd be like six months before 
oh. the final product was going to be done. That was kind of the world we lived in. And yeah. then this was the first sign of when things started changing was fi- mid fairy tale. But they just sped up their end. It was the shows after that where you were doing one show at a time and you had to get it done in a one week period of time because they were going to mix it in a one week period of time and it needed to be on the air in two weeks. That changed the workflow of, for everybody. But I think fairy tale may have been the last that we, that we did in the old model uh, yeah. right. before they ship. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good question. Hi. Adorable. Hi. Oh, hello. If you could relate. No, we can hear. I can if hear you. If you could relate to any character that isn't main, like, isn't in fairy tale, your personality, who would it be and why? That is in fairy tale? Is not it's in not in fairy, fairy tale. Hmm. Uh, like one of the characters we've played? No, just not in the fairy tale guild. Oh, just not in the one. guild. Oh. Hmm. Makoto Misaka. Yeah. Besides the fact that I totally wear shorts underneath my skirts, like for real. Um, <laughs> like I really do. I was like, yeah, I like that too. I, I can't obviously like walk on ceilings and throw real guns and like blow up stuff, which would be really cool. But um, I do have a lot of like childishness about me sometimes, and I'm really like immature. <laughs> so I would say that I like to relate to her. Uh, as a teenager, I was probably a lot more like rogue, just brooding. Sitting in my room, just sitting in darkness. Everything's darkness. And you made it out. I made it yeah. out. Yeah. Yay. Made it, I, made it, I made it out the other side. As a dad of two daughters, I most identify with his character. <laughs> and homeless. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, pass. Oh. I don't know. It's a pass. I, I you literally can, you have can no use idea. one. You haven't used one Gosh. yet. Pass. I'm, gonna, I'm, using my, I'm gonna use my call a friend. <laughs> yeah, I don't have an answer either. Yeah, no, Thank you. We can do it. Thanks. All we right. can do it. Is this I our like last your one? Cosplay. Last question, last and we have Break one to two minutes left. You did it. Yes. Good job. Thank you. Um, so my question is for all of you, um, relating to who would you live to with question. If you had to go on a five day journey, who would you travel with? Who would you travel with, and why? From fairy tale or no? From fairy tale, the guild. Um, not Natsu because he'd vomit everywhere. Uh, right. That would be true. gross. Uh, I would travel with Lucy. Yes. That's yeah, a good she one. seems like a good one. great. I don't know. Or happy. I think I'd put up with Gray. <laughs> it seems pretty useful. Just like freeze some stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's temperature regulation. That's true. Uh-huh. Like, that's whatever the AC that is, is important. Out, it depends yeah. on where you're going. It's quite useful. Yeah. But not the butt jiggle gang oh, ever. Oh, no. <laughs> um, that's gross. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a story. Yeah. I mean, they can be in the car over there. I just don't yeah. want to be in the same just car with them. Not so we go sit over there. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, I travel with Urza. All right. Urza, nice. Good answer. Good answer. Last question. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you, fairy tale Thank panel. You, panel.